And uh, thanks everyone for showing up. Thanks for everyone for joining Telegram. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, this is uh, Sommelier's third uh, Telegram AMA. And uh, we decided that, you know, it's an, instead of living at everybody at Clubhouse, why don't we take the Clubhouse to Telegram? And so this is Sommelier's Clubhouse party on Telegram. So easy. Just pick up the, you know, just go to Telegram channel and pick us up. <laughs> so first of all, thank you to um, all our community members uh, who have put up with all our announcements um, every day. Thank you. Uh, thank you for our last speaker, uh, McLean Wilkinson of New Cypher and uh, a former co-founder um, with uh, Michael on New Cypher. Thank you for joining us and giving us New Cypher's debrief. Uh, the New Cypher recording is now on our Twitter. So if you go to twitter.com slash somfinance, S-O-M-M-F-I-N-I-N-C-E, uh, you will be able to download and listen to uh, McLean's awesome update on what's happening with New Cypher, as well as the liquidity concept for New Cypher. Uh, so this today we have a special guest um, and maybe um, our one of our biggest guests for the year, uh, Michael Igorov, who was so kind to jump on. And um, again, this is we're, we're naming this telegram the Sommelier Liquidity Telegram. So we're getting it right. And what we're going to do is talk about um, essentially liquidity, uh, because Sommelier is or aims to be sort of the liquidity uh, platform for, you know, specifically for retail and making sure that we act as the prime brokerage for those who can't afford to get sophisticated prime brokerage services. So I'd like to welcome my guest, Michael Igorov, and Zucky Mannion is coming along. So let's start with Michael. Michael. Greetings. Hi. Yeah, nice to nice to hear and everyone. He's speaking. Yeah. But I'm not hearing him. Uh, then, okay. Yeah. So, do you hear me? Okay. Good. 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 Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So anyway, it sounds like a, an interesting chat ahead. Mm -hmm. Michael, I'm not hearing you. Yeah, but I'm speaking. You want to type in, uh, type in the Telegram and see if uh, you're talking, and okay, maybe you want to restart your Telegram. Mm -hmm. I can hear okay, him. let me check. I can't hear him. Um, oh, okay. where, is this, where is this channel? So you can hear him. And I'm the problem. Hmm. Yes, that's strange. Maybe if Tarek restarts Telegram, it will work. Perfect. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Joe. <laughs> I did get it. <laughs> all right. Oh, on. Sorry, Michael. Go ahead. You were saying. Yeah, I mean that's all right. I just, uh, yeah, just uh, very glad to to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I want to say today, uh, if, if you could orient us and our community um, around who you are um, and what you do, um, that might be a good place to start. And then from there, we'd love to jump in to talk about, you know, what is happening with liquidity and what is the curve point of view of liquidity? Is that okay? Oh, sorry? Yes. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. So, um, so I'm the founder of uh, Curve Finance, which is uh, automatic market maker, well, currently for stable coins, but um, soon that may change a little bit. Um, and before that, as, as you said, I call wait, wait, stop. Uh, stop. What did you just say? Whoa, 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 hold on. What did you just say? <laughs> you said something, I think you dropped a bomb there. Did you say it may change? In a bit? Yes, I did say it may change because, uh, it, well, currently we support just stable, well, pretty much similar priced assets. But uh, yeah, there are basically some algorithms uh, in the pipeline ready to launch to support volatile pairs. Um, wow. Wow. Um, uh, thank you for letting us know. And I guess this is maybe one of the first places that, that you may have shared that little tidbit of information. Thank you. I'm sorry, can we continue? Who are you? <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm, I'm the founder of Curve Finance. And uh, before founding Curve, I also co-founded New Cypher with, uh, with McLean. Um, but, uh, but actually, by education, I'm a physicist. And um, that apparently helps. So that's uh, kind of briefly what it is. Awesome. 
Well, thank you very much for introducing. And I think we have Zaki Mani in here. Zaki, you here, bro? I am here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. And Zaki, we were just doing brief introductions. So tell us, who is Zaki? And what do you uh, do? Yeah, I'm Zucky. Uh, I uh, I've been uh, doing blockchain just as long as Michael, and uh, I ha I worked on Cosmos. Um, my co-founder is Sommelier. Uh, I'm just uh, really excited about uh, AMMs and liquidity management now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zucky. All right. So Michael, uh, and thank you for orienting us about Curve. I think uh, you know when last I checked, DeFi Pulse. Um, Curve was uh, possibly either number one um, or number two in the DEX space. Uh, and I'm just curious, how did Curve achieve that particular standing? And, and what is the Curve uh, sort of uh, secret sauce of success that, that allows you to do that right now? Yeah, well, I probably would tell the story about how it started and, well, technically. So, um, well, firstly, I uh, kind of, in 2019, I realized the problem that uh, with, with stablecoin swaps because I was an active user of MakerDAO and uh, had always needed to change between USDC, which is easy to withdraw to bank account in the United States at least, and DAI, which was which is pretty much the currency of uh, um, of MakerDAO, and um, well, I realized that this problem exists between all stable coins and at the same time I was playing with some trading bots a little bit. So I figured that there is a um, kind of way to make very, very efficient algorithm for swapping stable coins. And um, that's what I did with Curve. So I started that and it was, I don't know, for some, something like between 100 and 1,000 times better than uh, Uniswap at that time, and which that allowed to quickly, um, for, for it to, very, to grow very quickly and to um, overcome liquidity for stable coins, or stable coin fares, not only on blockchain, but also on centralized exchanges. And um, yeah, so, but the algorithm is, well, it, in principle, pretty simple. You just need to focus liquidity to be more dense where it's mostly required at the price 1.0. And it's just, there is a formula which makes it smoothly, but that's pretty much it. And um, uh, after kind, kind of doing that for all sorts of stable coins, including Bitcoin denominated stable coins, um, we've launched Curve DAO to kind of decentralize the operation of all of that. And with Curve DAO, it's actually pretty interesting because uh, we've made it so that um, half of the earned uh, fees uh, gets distributed to the DAO, and in exchange, the system um, prints uh, releases CRV for for liquidity providers. So, and um, so those who lock. Uh, CR, uh, CRV, the native token of Curve, uh, they earn admin fees, and um, those who provide liquidity earn the tokens which they can lock for earning admin fees if they want to. So uh, that proved to be pretty effective because this uh, made the system, I would say, pretty economically stable. Uh, so it's actually um, just because of this I think it creates some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of mode to uh, to basically remain uh, the most uh, effective system just because of this connection uh, with, the, uh, with the CRV economics. And that, uh, I think, um, to, you know, the combination of very efficient algorithms and the uh, tokenomics, I think, propelled uh, Curve where it is today. Congratulations and awesome. So, so really, we're looking at two main uh, foundational pillars for Curve success. Um, you know, efficient algorithm and uh, the CRV rewards token. But one of the things I've noticed um, in Curve is that there are so many different types of stables and 
the governance process for getting them on board seems to be also something unique. Um, could you speak to, you know, how do, you know, new peers and new partners come on board for it? All right. Like proposals. Yeah. So in principle, of course, they, they can either like ask us to deploy or they could uh, self-serve themselves via factory pools. So, but, but, you know, creation of the pool is not necessarily super complicated. Um, but up, well, unless the, unless the coin in the pool is something special, which requires custom work. But after that, um, after that, uh, connecting the pool to, to, to curve DAO requires, uh, you know, DAO to agree on that. Because if the curve is connect, if the pool is connected to the DAO, it will receive, uh, it, it will be able to receive CRV and, um, you know, give admin fees to the DAO. So the DAO should agree on that. And uh, basically a proposal is created to include that, uh, to include a pool. And yeah, it's, uh, that's how it kind of gets included. After the pool is included in the DAO, it's also pretty interesting how um, how the amount of CRV which pool is getting is determined, um, and that kind of doesn't make any assumptions about what sort of coin is in the pool, what price does it have. It you just uh, just the participants of the DAO they um, they ch they basically give preferences to which which pools should be getting CRV allocation. And um, basically these preferences are summed up and um, uh, depending on you know the sum each pool is having, it proportionally has some amount of CRV go into it. And you know the governance participants can change their preferences like once a week if they want to. Um, if they don't, it just stays the, to the previous choice and they can pretty much uh, increase the number of tokens um, given to some pool and you know all other governance participants cannot do anything about that so let's say if i don't know let's say if you obtained one percent of voting power by locking crv for ve crv um, you can uh, pretty much you, you pretty much can control 1% of CRV inflation. Uh, and and you can point where it's getting. And that's pretty powerful because if you think that TVL on curve is like what it is, I don't know, 7 billion or something, you pretty much can uh, propel some pool to the TVL being 1% of 7 billion, which is, um, I don't know, 70 million. So uh, basically, wow. if you, uh, you uh, it works like you wait for, for that pool, it gets CRV, and uh, people see that CRV, the APY in that pool is good, so they jump in, the pool grows bigger, and uh, but it's only worthwhile until the pool is too big, so the APY is dropping because it's distributed between all people who aped in. And uh, yeah, so basically, uh, basically, eventually, that means that uh, governance participants can control uh, sizes of the pools and uh, uh, their kind of strength is how many percent of, of voting power they have. Awesome. Uh, so now really what we have is three pillars. The efficient algorithm, the CRV uh, token as reward, but then also the curve DAO. Anything yeah. else besides the three core? Mm, I think these are the core. And the most, uh, and of course, the most uh, needed is the algorithm. Yeah. Right, but but something interesting as well is that um, you know, Curve's code um, is not necessarily open source, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. right. It's um, it, it's a kind of uh, source which is readable, but it's not like uh, not necessarily uh, copyable, free to use code. Uh, so that's uh, that's the thing. And, and, and given that, it seems that you, you may have had folks who sort of, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say uh, licensed the code. Is that how we would put it? You know, um, yeah, thinking... you know, it's, it wasn't kind of framed officially as license. I mean, on kind of various super official paper, but yes, this is kind of licensing. Um, okay. We had some folks who wanted to, to launch uh, forks and uh, 
we thought that maybe maybe we can permit them to do that uh, and um, that apparently worked pretty well for them because right. uh, apparently if we, when we permit to somebody to launch even uh, even just that is kind of works as a as an interesting endorsement um, and yeah Got it. so so what that, we, that's and and the reason why I asked simply because I see curve now on other chains I see curve on on phantom um, you know I yep. see curve on Binance Smart Chain. Uh, so my next question would oh, actually, be... Actually, Curve is not on Binance Smart Chain. It's sorry. on Polygon. It's but, on Polygon. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Right, Binance Smart right. Chain, there is one, one, actually one fork which licensed like that. Got it. That, sorry. But I, and I, I, I think, um, you know, I'm trying to think, again, efficient algorithm, stable coin trading in all its, in all its in possibilities. So my question now is, okay, so now that, you know, you've established success, you know, where is Curve going next? What is next for uh, you know, the next area or the next vision or, or right. what is the vision that determines what you guys do next? Yeah, yeah. I think it's absolutely necessary to go to, to volatile pairs. And mm -hmm. uh, um, well, actually that's a, not, that's a not trivial, non trivial problem because that problem is kind of similar to market making even on centralized exchanges. Right. And like how to, and, and now you want to make a market making for um, market making algorithm, which is not only profitable, but also profitable when everyone knows it and everybody could uh, kind of try to out to, to kind of out trade the market maker or whatever. And uh, even in, if even in that scenario, it uh, it holds up. That's uh, that's good. And one of the first algorithm which uh, which works like that is what Uniswap two has called the constant product invariant. Um, like uh, it's not necessarily super efficient, but it's uh, very simple and very bulletproof. And uh, we tried to to actually figure something more complex to be uh, more efficient and um, still um still to have it fairly bulletproof and yeah we will see how it works out uh, it's not yet launched if anyone wonders uh, but it's uh extremely close <laughs> all right excellent uh okay so let's now talk about um you know the competition what else is out there and um you know zucky um, I'm going to ask you to chat about, you know, so we've been working with Uniswap SV3 and liquidity for a while. What do you, what do you think about the um, alternatives out there to Curve that you're seeing and, and you're working with, particularly maybe maybe looking at some of the things like Uniswap? Yeah, so, I mean, we've been we've been working a lot on, uh, on Uniswap V3. And one of the things that, you know, uh, uh, that uh, sort of, curve beat to the market, right? And was able to, to was like, you know, Uniswap, the sort of normal Uniswap algorithm is just, you know, tragically inefficient. And, you know, constant product is tragically inefficient on stablecoin pairs. Um, and the design of Uniswap v3, um, because it has this concentrated liquidity mechanism, which essentially makes the liquidity market responsive or adaptive, um, you now have this model in which uh, liquidity can be concentrated around stablecoin pairs, um, and you are starting to see like significant stablecoin volumes on on uh, Uniswap v3. Um, though again, like uh, Sommelier is also is primarily focused on building tooling for the uh, for you know uh, the long tail of sort of of pairs of more volatile pairs. We are uh, we've been, it's been interesting to see how uh, stablecoins have now emerged on Uniswap when stablecoins were not really uh, uh, a part of Uniswap V2. Uh, you know, and so now I'm, you know, thanks for that, Zaki. So turning back to Michael. Michael, we're seeing stablecoin volume growing on alternative DEXs that are uh, coming up with, you know, their approach to uh, liquidity. Uh, what does that mean for, you know, your view? How do you how do you perceive these changes? Um, Sorry, can you repeat the question? I totally missed it. That's all right. Um, We've seen other um, DEXs like Uniswap now heading into stables with concentrated liquidity. What is, you know, the your perspective 
on you know the stable coin pairs growing uh, is it all ships rise as all you know as everybody enjoys the value of efficient algorithms or is it a zero sum you know where one goes down another goes up well i think there is uh well stable coin to stable coin market is pretty saturated so yes it's uh, I would consider that, you know, Uniswap 3 as competition here. Um, and, well, Uniswap, for some reason, not clear to me, doesn't want to distribute her, their token to liquidity providers. Um, and that, I think, is a disadvantage uh, they have to liquidity providers. And also, it's not necessarily super easy to liquidity provision, but for stable coins, for stable coins, I think that's uh, that's manageable. Got it. So, so you're really seeing the 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 competitive moat being really the token, and it's well, not only totally the token. That's also the kind of the market uh, was established with all integration and stuff. Right, 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 right. And 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 integrations do tend to be sticky. Uh, once integrated, you know, is it your view that people tend to change quickly or is it your view that once integrated, they tend to hold as long as they're effective? Sorry, I again missed it. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so the question I, is, I had is, you know, my question was integrations you mentioned being a valuable part um, because they were early. So the question is, yes. your market, will these integrations hold or are these integrations a point of competition? uh well somewhat they they are contributing to uh to the um to kind of to stickiness but but really but if people uh, if projects integrate one project they can integrate another project uh, as well so it's not like like um no it, it's it's not necessarily uh like a very um kind of huge uh competitive mode do you have a favorite integration michael that you want to talk about I think well, there's I think, many cool integrations on here. Well, there are uh, there are many cool integrations, and basically there are two two kind of different sorts of integrations. One is why earn why earn like uh, things where like people deposit uh, their coins and you know they make profits on depositing them on different platforms. And uh, another sort of integration is uh, exchanges, like when you know exchange aggregators like uh, one inch of paraswap or like whatever so that kind of stuff and uh, there are like really really many integrators who um, who do that and i think that's great because um kind of the, my assumption is that um, basically they will integrate all uh, projects eventually and that will make a fair competition so whatever is the most effective will win so well i don't know if it's always true because like at least for exchanges many people exchange for example on uniswap instead of going to exchange aggregators and yes they get worse pricing but they just don't know still about exchange aggregators despite them being around for like i don't know almost two years um so uh but yeah that's uh um kind of but you know but the assumption is that eventually, eventually the you know fire market uh, um, will um, will make more efficient algorithms prosper, and that's that's well, kind of why Uniswap is all. That's why Uniswap is now focused on capital efficiency, right? Yep, yep. And speaking of capital efficiency, the question for both of you guys, Saki and Michael. I did... Yes. Ah, uh, dude, not yet. Soon, soon, soon. Ah, nearly there, nearly there. We have, we have um, uh, uh, a, we have um, a picture that we put up in the in our uh, Telegram, uh, which is a cool thing you can do with Telegram. Um, so we put up a picture um, of Uni and USDC and concentrated liquidity. And this is a question for both Michael and Saki. What happened here in this chart? looking at this new concept of concentrated liquidity on a non-stable how would you describe the situation anyone who wants to go first sure uh i mean i think this is a great example of um what can happen uh in 
as like in the current immature state of concentrated liquidity. Um, you know, people are right now, I think a lot, there's a lot of the market is just sort of guessing where to put their liquidity. Um, and the, uh, and when volatility drives the spot price uh, into a realm where there's no liquidity, suddenly uh, uh, the, uh, you know, your swaps on Uniswap V3 become really uh, inefficient. Uh, you suddenly go to this high slippage regime. Um, and this sort of discontinuities in liquidity uh, can happen in Uniswap V3. Um, and I think it's a really, it's a really uh, like sort of the open question about the success of the model that they built of whether or not uh, the tooling will emerge in the liquidity provider space um, so that, you know, uh, the liquidity is concentrated, you know, in a, in like sophisticated market responsive place. Uh, but this is, this is a great, a great image of sort of concentrated liquidity, essentially kind of uh, um, being concentrated in the wrong place. your position uh, can you repeat the question oh uh, well i we're just looking at uh concentrated liquidity examples and wanted to get your opinion about usdc in the telegram i'm just curious um do you have any thoughts about that mm. concentrated liquidity examples uh, well you ask you said ask the question i listened to it but i still didn't understand what you what you're asking That's because i posted Wrong channel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so this is a concentrated liquidity example um, that Saki was just speaking to, and um, I was curious about your thoughts about concentrated liquidity in, in in this, and and what this this outcome. What do you think about it in in terms of non stables? Ah, this example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's easier. So. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't looking in the chat, so that's why I didn't understand what it is. So anyway, uh, you, well, in, in Uniswap V3, you, you're kind of allowed to put liquidity in any range, and you know, when different people put in different ranges, you have some liquidity distribution. But this liquidity distribution is kind of tied to prices. So when price changes, the liquidity distribution stays where it is. And uh, well, what happens there on that picture is, uh, I think, quite obvious. Uh, I think uh, market crashed, uni price went down, and uh, um, the price become not where most people put liquidity. But that's not not surprising. So what's surprising is uh, uh, what m m some people may find surprising. Uh, imagine that you are trying to provide liquidity in such a uh, market, which is volatile. So you put liquidity in some price range and I don't know, and the price goes down, right? So let's say you provide liquidity for shitcoin, for example, and shitcoin falls down, what do you do? Uh, well, um, thing is that if you had liquidity range up somewhere up there and now you are lower than that, you are left with bags of shitcoin. Um, and you fall together with shitcoin. Um, well, that's okay. Maybe you're holding shitcoin, right? Uh, but let's say if, imagine if you now move liquidity to the current price. Let's say, you know, take liquidity in shitcoin, uh, provide it uh, somewhere close, closer to the current price, or even, I don't know, sell shitcoin to have both, both shitcoin and, I don't know, USDC and provide liquidity at the current price. So, Mm, so far, so good. And now I imagine that shitcoin moons, like they do moon sometimes. Um, and when it moons, uh, you are kind of out of range again. But when you're out of range again, if shitcoin mooned, you, you are left with uh, USDC. So you're always left with a losing coin when you are out of range. And that's a problem, I think. Um, it's not like, I mean, it's an inevitable problem. It's it's manageable, I guess, uh, but it's hard to manage it manually. Got it. And and so uh, when you you know just to think the curve is when you think about what's coming new for curve in terms of non stables, is this a situation that that you you know that curve has accounted for? Does this curve have a view? Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, we saw that problem, uh, and obviously, well, 
we stick to continuous functions rather than uh, kind of um, rather than uh, what's uh, on Uniswap, but that doesn't matter. You still have some higher liquidity somewhere and lower liquidity in other places. And basically, you have some liquidity bump at the current price, and you the, the current price goes away. You need to move towards the current price. So um, our idea is that we uh, we actually found an interesting way to evaluate the profit you've got, and apparently when if, if the price is out and you, you want to move this liquidity bump towards the current price, you it's actually a lossy process. So but if you move it towards the current price, you lose money and you have negative profit at that point. So, and we, well, you have something which makes positive profit, something which makes negative profit, and you can maximize their, you know, positive profit minus negative profit. And that's kind of what we're doing. It's awesome. All right, so is Joel still with this question? And Mario, uh, that, and, and thank you, Zaki, thank you, Joel. Th thank you, Zaki, thank you, Michael. Joel has a question. like it's a radio show. <laughs> Joel, are you there? All right. Okay, well, uh, we'll continue, but uh, you can raise your hand again and try again. We'll, we'll definitely try to pick you up. Okay. All right, so we're not uh, hearing from Joel at this time, um, but uh, uh, again, he can raise his hand again and, and we can try. Okay, so uh, what I want to switch into, Michael, um, is talking about uh, L2. So today, I think, is uh, May 28th, and I believe Arbitrum is going mainnet. Uh, what is your view? What is the curve position on L2s and DEXs? Yeah, so yeah, with L2s, it's quite, kind of interesting because we, well, we have Arbitrum kind of starting today, right? Um, uh, we have Arbitrum starting today and we have a Polygon, which is not L2. Um, and we will also have uh, ZK Sync and uh, Optimism. Uh, so yeah, we have what a competition between L2s, which is great, but uh, it's not single L2. So uh, that's, uh, anyway, our position is that we probably would want to launch on all uh, available L2s and uh, whichever wins uh, will be the winner, but we probably shouldn't depend on that. Interesting. Uh, Zaki, what is your opinion about uh, the DEXs and L2s and maybe Uniswap on L2? Um, my opinion is one is that, you know, it's sort of ever, it's essential to an L2, um, that it, it, it get its, uh, uh, AMM, uh, 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 like, uh, automated market makers are essential to the success of L2s. So I think you're going to see like every automated market maker design sort of spring up on every L2, um. There's going to be a sort of natural competition or there's a sort of a natural flow there um it's we are sort of moving into this like sort of multi-chain charted blockchain world um and that means that uh amm liquidity has become is going to is going to become somewhat dispersed and i think it's going to be very interesting to see uh in different l2s on different uh, uh l1 blockchains like what pairs end up trading um significantly on each place i i suspect that there's going to be some kind of specialization um but it's hard to it's hard to fully anticipate where it will manifest Zaki, question for you do you think the you know um and wait hold on a second just to confirm michael um will curve be on arbitrum when it goes mainnet or will we be waiting a while 
Well, I don't think it would be a lot of waiting, but uh, we probably should be should be some should take some time to deploy and uh, to test the UI. But I think uh, it's like another Ethereum compatible blockchain kind of from from our perspective. So that should be all right. Would you say that your experience on other chains um, like Polygon? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it works uh, on Polygon. It worked pretty much uh, straight away. The only problem is that there are a lack of tools like Etherscan is not very not very nice. Uh, right. So that uh, that complicates things a little bit. Also, if uh, if the chain becomes unstable, that's not not cool. Also, but um, other than that, um, it's pretty much like Ethereum. And um, one interesting thing is that we are actually now using polygon a little bit like testnet um, testnet where you can play with real money rather than imaginary money so that's uh, that's kind of good um, and I think l2s have this um, kind of testnet use case um, like better testnet than testnets testing in prod <laughs> so yeah, testing in prod. you can test in prod <laughs> and uh, still be safer than testing in prod on ethereum because yeah. like you know on, on ethereum it's harder to test like transactions confirm in much longer time and yeah if let's say if there is some something you may face in a thousand transactions right or like you want to see um that uh, you want to arbitrage your pool with something right or whatever um and on um on L2s, you can do that, and on uh, on Ethereum, it's too expensive, I guess, to, to do that uh, just for testing. Got it. Uh, one of the, I think, uh, uh, Joel was asking about aggregators um, and gas prices, um, and uh, one of the, maybe I could just distill a question from him here, which is, you know, what is your view on the gas price impact on on curve, um, its community and 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 volumes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, of course, of course, you you wouldn't have the traders who uh, who don't want uh, who don't want to to pay uh, much if when gas prices go go up. But whales will be still okay with that. So, um, well, I think that high gas prices are so far were not not as much affecting um, not as much affecting curve as Uniswap, I guess, because medium like average transaction on Uniswap is twenty thousand dollars, and on curve, average transaction is a million dollars. So that changes, that makes change things a little bit. Got it. Different uh, customer segments. Okay, well, I know that we're, we're well over time, and um, I know that you both are super busy. So we'll wrap up um, with just a final thought uh, from you both. Why don't I start with Zaki? Zaki, what's your final thoughts on on stablecoin pairs in the new L2 worlds or uh, going forward, and and within the context of you know your understanding of Curve? Um, I think like one of the sort of uh, 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 most exciting things that we didn't really cover was that that. Uh, you know, the curve DAO is starting to extend itself across multiple chains as well. Um, and I think the the sort of emergence of these multi-chain DAOs, I think, are probably one of the most exciting sort of general ch uh, uh, changes as we sort of uh, continue to move forward. So I'm, I'm I'm sort of excited to see like the like DAOs that extend across L2s and different L1s. Um, I think that's going to be a, a really important phenomenon in the evolution of uh, the blockchain space. So, are we going to see Curve on the Cosmos? No, I mean, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, with EVM support uh, on Cosmos, why not, right? Why not? Uh, and like FedA is is working hard on on sort of getting our Ethermint design up and getting Ethermint uh, production ready. So you know. There yeah, will. yeah, yeah. With that, it would be uh, would be really cool. We're actually testing something which can connect uh, different uh, EVM compatible blockchains together, so that they are kind of all connected to the DAO. So DAO is kind of um, spreading 
uh, to multiple chains, although like the DAO itself lives on Ethereum, it can kind of benefit from deployments on different chains mm -hmm. and um, and kind of provide token inflation to different chains also. So that's one thing which uh, which we need and uh, looks like it's uh, gonna be also released soon. And yeah, why not? Why not on Cosmos, right? Why not on Cosmos? All right, gentlemen, uh, I know we're over time. Michael, thank you for the final word. Zucky, thank you for the awesome uh, responses and positions on concentrated liquidity. And uh, again, congratulations to you, Michael, and the Curve community and um, the Curve DAO for continued growth. Uh, really great uh, meetup, and we hope that uh, we'll catch up with you guys uh, as uh, Curve continues to expand. Thank you, Tarek. Thank you.